Hey guys, it's Troy here. Wanted to share with you uh, a brand new pen uh, that I've added to my collection here just recently. Uh, but I picked it up on the back end of something that we did as a family. On Saturday, which as I'm recording this is just two days ago, uh, we got home from a family road trip. We went all the way down from North Carolina down to Fort Worth, Texas. And we went for the purpose of meeting the folks at the Fort Worth Pen Club. You can find them on Facebook. Just look for Fort Worth Pen Club. And uh, we were talking about whether we're going to do a family vacation this year. And we just, well, we can go see some of my family. I've got family in New York, New Hampshire, uh, South Carolina, Florida. Well, we just decided let's do something different, kind of on a whim, and let's go meet some folks like Larry the Pen Bug Guy. Uh, you've probably seen his YouTube channel, hopefully you have, and got to meet him and Mr. Announcer. I know what he looks like in person. <laughs> so uh, you only get to see his hands, basically. Uh, but anyway, I uh, got a chance to meet with them. Well, on the way home, I decided a couple of things. Number one, I wanted to take my family down through Cajun country. I enjoy Cajun country. I feel right at home in Lafayette, Louisiana in that area. So took them to an awesome Cajun restaurant that I've been to before. Whole family loved it. And after we left Lafayette the next morning, we took a swing through New Orleans. And I said, if I'm going to New Orleans, I've got to go to the French Quarter and visit Papier Plume. Now, this is my second trip that I've ever been to the French Quarter. Uh, first time I went years ago before fountain pens were really a hobby and uh, we went down to the uh, the French Quarter to Bourbon Street and went to some had some croissants and coffee and looked around this time we went to Royal Street and found Papier Plume I've tried their ink before uh, several major distributors have carried their ink I've had a good many samples of them I've given away a lots of their inks some I've liked better than others uh, but also, uh, the, the shop was beautiful. I uh, got to, a, a chance uh, to meet the owner um, and uh, really enjoyed talking with him for quite a while. And I picked up a pen while I was there. I also picked up a bottle of ink. And um, unfortunately, they didn't have the ink in stock that I wanted. I wanted fountain pen ink from Papier Plume. Uh, there was one particular ink of theirs I really did like, and that was Peacock Blue. They didn't have it. So, my second favorite ink. Forget me not blue. I've had this before, used it, and liked it. So uh, you know they've got the the little flair de lis uh, on the top there. So um, you know Patrick and his staff were very helpful, and I got to looking around a shop, and he had some awesome dip pens. Not really what I was in the, looking for. They had uh, a lot of Lamy stuff. They had uh, the newer Esther Brooks, and uh, then they had a shelf display of Jean-Pierre Lapine. I said, hmm, why not? And he had Jean-Pierre Lapine is a fifth generation pen maker from France. And so I took a look and this one, and it was a red one that really stuck out to me, but this one right here is the Winston model. I saw several Winstons uh, that were in various colors and I'll put the link uh, to Lapine's website down below in uh, my description of the video and you can take a look and what you want to do is especially if you go in uh, you know uh, if you go into Google's browser Chrome you'll want to translate the page because it's going to be in French uh, so you want to translate it to English not that the translation is fantastic automatically uh, but it's readable so I went ahead and I picked up this it's an oversized pen it's a fat pen it's called the Winston because after Winston Churchill. Quite honestly, the French owe an awful lot to someone like Winston Churchill. After years and years of being at odds, the French and the English, well, during the uh, 20th century, uh, the French should be very happy uh, to have been allies with the English as well as Americans. And the French and the Americans actually have a very long history going back to the 1700s. Um, so, Anyway, this right here, I just thought was absolutely gorgeous. So, picked it up. I said, well, I kind of want it in a medium nib, and I guess that's their default nib is medium. And I really, really liked it. So, uh, on the top, you've got a, uh, for a finial, it's got that gold-colored cap. Um, and this particular clip actually goes into the, the acrylic. 
and then you've got this oversized cap band, which you know it doesn't sit um, and <laughs> it doesn't sit very well. It kind of wobbles like a weeble a little bit with that cap band. Uh, but you've got on the back where it literally says that handmade um, and tells you where they made it in France, and then you've got the the Jean Pierre Lapine signature right there on the cap band. So. I like oversized pens. I like big pens and I cannot lie. You open it up and that's what it looks like on the inside of the cap. So it's got that, that big old band and it's acrylic right there at the threads. But you look at the pen itself and you've got the metal on the threads. And it's one of the things when you put it in, you'll hear, you'll, you'll feel the friction on that. So that's the only thing I didn't like is it's just a little rough uh, feeling and sometimes sounding with those threads. But other than that, that's not so bad. You got a tapered section down here. The threads don't bite too bad because it's big enough a section where you're really not going to feel that, even on my my big mitts. All right, so then you've got uh, at the end of the section, you've, you you uh, have that flare out to a band right there and then you've got a nib that is a Jean-Pierre Lapine branded nib. Now I'm just going to go on a limb here and it's probably what a Yovo nib. Uh, I'm not really sure I would assume so if it was uh, unless they have them custom made by some other company then uh, companies like Yovo uh, that actually put logos on uh, pens. This particular pen um, is a cartridge converter pen. Now, one of the things that they do not do is they do not give you a converter. For the price tag, which the retail was $155 off the top of my head, uh, you would think that they would include a converter, but they did not. And you can tell I've gone through an awful lot of ink just since I've inked it up because that was a fairly full uh, converter when I started. So what I did was I just told them get me a Schmidt converter uh, and, or, and it looks like they just gave me a Schmidt style converter. They had to, the paw through uh, some converters at Papier Plume to find one. I said well, if you don't find it no big deal. Uh, behind me over here I've got drawers and I've got some at home uh, but if you've got a really good and I was hoping for Schmidt brand then I would buy it. So I had to pay a few extra bucks to get the converter. And uh, it does come actually and, and by the way this screw has a good many screws on that, uh, turns on that thread and this is when you're putting it back together keep going keep going keep going and then boom snug all right so but when, when you get it Jean-Pierre Lapine boxes them so you get a white cardboard sleeve and then you have an orange and brown box with Lapine name, so you know it comes from France, much like the cone heads. Papier plumes stuck in one of their business cards. You've got a little booklet that gives you a little information and their website. So, um, like I said, I'll put that link down below. And it did come with a standard international cartridge. Okay. So that's all that came in the box, is the pen, the cartridge, the little booklet, and uh, you know they, they threw in the Papier Plume stuff along with that pen. So, But this is uh, how that presentation is made. Okay, So not too bad, I can't complain about that. So our pen brand that I've never really touched until I went to go see it, not too bad. So how does it write? I'll tell you this, I test drove it while I was there at Papier Plume, and my first writing with it, I was like, just a hair on the scratchy side, could be a little bit better, I said, I can smooth that out. Uh, well, Patrick said, well, he'd take it, and he'd work on it real quick, and he did, and he made it, uh, it, it seems to be a little better than it was when I was there in the store, tested it with some black ink, um, and uh, then he flushed it out real good, and uh, I said, okay, well, even if it wasn't perfect, I could still work on it. But you know what? It's good enough for me for right now. Like I said, I've been using it all day long. Um, and I've gone through an awful lot of ink. And it's a wet writer. So it uses a good amount of ink. 
fairly quickly. So, how does it write? Let me show you. Alright, now that you've seen uh, all the statistics on it, let me show you how the Winston writes from Jean-Pierre Lapine. Monsieur Jean-Pierre Lapine. You know, my father was actually a Pierre, Robert Pierre Laplan. No joke, true story. All right, so this is his Winston model. I'm assuming to emulate how Winston Churchill often had cigars in his mouth, and this was a cigar-shaped pen. So I'm assuming that's why he called this the Winston, in honor of Winston Churchill. So this is a medium nib. It has a little bit of smoothing, all right? So just a little bit of smoothing done to it. And it really depends. Sometimes I've had this uh, on regular old paper. I can tell you that this writes an awful lot and I get a lot of feathering and that could be as much due to the ink as to the paper itself. Usually on this Rhodia dot pad, it writes fairly smoothly. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of the steel nib from Jean-Pierre Lapine, uh, but um, you will get a good solid line. You get a fairly wet line. All right. So, and as I uh, told you before, it is Papier Plume, and their ink is the Forget Me Not Blue. All right, so one of the things, one of the reasons I got it was number one to remember my trip. I wanted to commemorate that whole trip and then come home with something to remind me of my time where I met some folks and uh, in Fort Worth and got the chance to take my family to the French Quarter. We got the chance to eat some Cajun food and uh, spent way too many hours cramped in a minivan all the way from North Carolina, all the way through South Carolina, Georgia. Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, into Texas. And then we did, on the way home, <laughs> Texas to Louisiana, to Mississippi, Alabama, and then into Florida, the panhandle of Florida, all the way over to Jacksonville, from Jacksonville up through Georgia, South Carolina, into North Carolina. So, yeah, spent an awful lot of time driving with uh, four other people in the car. But I've, I brought home this. Um, and I really, really love the color. There's absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous color. If you go to the Lapine website, you're going to find a bunch of other really funky looking pens. And to me, this is his best looking model that he has. Um, I didn't really like some of the other models uh, that he's come out with. They're a little modern art looking kind of thing. And just was not my style, quite honestly. Uh, but this right here is very much my style. It's oversized, it's girthy, it fits well in the hand. Um, now, I have not been using this posted. Can you use it posted? Sure you can, and it's good and tight. And yeah, it kind of back weights that pen. And it's big enough where you really don't have to have it posted if you don't want. You can, and it looks pretty cool, but i got to be honest with you, I can still hold it and it's big enough to fit in my hand without having to post that pen and without back weighting it and it's fairly comfortable to hold and to write with when you're writing all day long like I was so uh, no, no complaints really uh, this is my first Lapine fairly smooth now I may yet take a little bit of smoothing to it just because I can um, I can tell you that the uh, tine alignment was uh, was on it. It was very nice and perfect. So, putting it back together. 
and this goes and will be sitting in my oversized pen drawer because the pen drawers I've got are too narrow so I've got one drawer that's that's taller than the others and that will be sitting in there right next to pens like my um, giant Sequoia like uh, the Mont Blanc 149 uh, and some other oversized pens so um, really happy with a gorgeous absolutely gorgeous pen by Jean-Pierre Lapine